In this video, we'll discuss how to use segues to create our navigation. We've learned how to activate the view controller in code, and that's a completely valid way to do it. But when creating your navigation, you might want to consider taking advantage of another iOS storyboard feature called segues. Segways allow you to define relationships between two screens. They also allow you to define the transition type and how to display the new screen. You can even get the segue to activate automatically when a button is tapped. The sourceless segue is used to display the initial view controller for a storyboard. This segue shows an arrow with no source, just the target. Only one view controller per storyboard can be marked with a sourceless segue. If you want to change the root view, you can drag the segue to another screen or you can select the view controller and change the properties to mark it as the initial controller. We have different segues for different navigation patterns. As well, Apple has made the segues adaptive, so their behavior can change depending on how and when they're used. We won't be covering all the segue types in this class. However, they are covered in our navigation class. For now, we want to display a view controller modally, so it'll cover any UI currently presented. To do this, we use the Present Modally segue. Once a segue has been created, you can select the segue in the storyboard and adjust its properties. Here, you can assign a segue an ID to access this from code, you can change the segue type, the transition type, and you can turn animations on and off. You can use the Perform segue method in a view controller to initiate a segue from code. This allows you to define the transition in the storyboard, but decide when to run it based on your application logic. This method takes a segue identifier and the sender, which is often just the view controller. 